Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And I'm delighted to greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. How's everybody doing this morning? We thank God for a brand new day. Um, this is the second day of a beautiful work week, and we are giving God praise, honor, and glory. <clears throat> All right, some notices and announcements. Let me just have some of you come on, let someone know that the pastor's on. How is everybody? Um, just good to see you. Good to see you, Natalie Crawford. I'm just going to wait a moment um, for some of you to come on, let someone know that the pastor's on. All right, we have to seven viewers. All right, so please, um, you know, check in, give me a comment, say hello, hallelujah, something. Let me know that you're there. Let me know that you're there. All right, Natalie Crawford, Sister Gloria James, how are you, Angela Thornton? How are you, Sister Marva Harding? Are you here? Are you in Guyana? Um, Angela Kelly, how are you? All right, good to see you, good to see you. All right, um, some announcements very, very quickly. This Sunday, this Sunday, and I'm sorry, this Saturday, this Saturday is our layman's picnic. Well, it's not the layman's picnic. It is the annual church picnic being sponsored by the layman. We're going to have a wonderful time of fellowship, food, games, fun in Prospect Park. So you want to meet us. If you don't have transportation, you can come to the church at 12 o'clock. We'll see that you get to the park and we'll see that you get back to the church. Um, but we were there last year. We had a wonderful time. It's just good. Who says that you can't be Christian and have fun? So um, please um, plan now. Tickets are $25 for adults and $20 for children um, under 12. And so let's just have a wonderful time of fellowship and fun. Then I want you to join me on Sunday for worship, on Sunday for worship. Um, I have a word that God has given me that I want to share with you. And it's the last Sunday in the month of of August, and um, we, we just thank God for being kind and getting us to this part. You know, the summer is almost over. We got to begin to focus towards the fall. Listen, if you haven't gone anywhere yet, you haven't taken a vacation, you haven't taken a moment to breathe, I want to encourage you um, to take that moment to breathe. Even Jesus took time away, and if I got a finger pointed at you, I got five coming back at me. So please take some time for time. But put God first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and whatsoever else you need will be added unto you. So I hope that you will, in fact, do that. And we will um, look to see you, you, and you. And that's pretty much um, what we have. Um, thank God for bringing us through the path is air and for just being um, the wonderful God that God is. We now will begin to focus and to plan for our full program, and I'll have those note announcements with you and for you as the week goes on, let you know what um, September looks like. We know that the fourth Sunday in September is always our homecoming Sunday. We're trying to make plans to have our street fair, which will be um, the fourth Saturday in September, and you'll get more details as it relates to that. And um, let's just be kind one to another. And, you know, if there are those that you haven't heard from in a while, reach out to them. Let them know that God loves them, and so do you. All right. Um, and you guys don't know, but you're helping me with my word on Sunday. We'll be, we'll be coming from this text. Um, we are, we're in the fifth chapter of Mark's gospel. And we, we talked yesterday how it is that Jesus um, healed this woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. Now, the fact of the matter, people probably forget this, is that Jesus was actually on his way to Jairus' house. Jairus was um, a ruler of the synagogue. He was a rabbi. He was very, very prominent. Jesus was on his way um, to Jairus' house. But he got interrupted, the Bible says, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. And when she heard that Jesus was coming, um, she said, oh, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'd be healed. She touched him. Jesus says, somebody touch me. And Peter, who was very impulsuous, says, "What, well, Lord, all these people around you could have been anybody. She said, no, I know that somebody touched me. You know, God knows when you touch him as an individual. It's amazing. He can be with us individually and collectively at the same time. He knows your individual needs. And the Bible says that Jesus kept looking around and the woman knew that she had been 
had that it was her. She was convicted. She came trembling at his feet, told him the whole story. Jesus says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Be freed from your suffering. We have verse 35 now, verse 35 of Mark's gospel. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher? In other words, Jairus, don't worry Jesus anymore. He's taken too long. Your daughter is dead. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. Don't believe the report that people will bring you. Believe God's report and understand that when people say no, God can say yes, even if they say that it's terminal, that it's over, that it's finished. God still has the last word. I want you to know that's not over until God says it's over. The Bible says that Jesus got there. He did not let anyone in except Peter, James, and John. These are his three closest disciples. And when they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw the commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? This child is not dead, as you suppose, but sleep but they laughed at him. Jesus does something very important here. When you want God to do a work in your life, you gotta have people around you who believe. You gotta have people around you who have faith. The Bible says that where there are two or three that are gathered together in my name, God has promised to meet us. You can't have God do great things in the midst of people who are your homeboys who don't believe. The Bible says, after Jesus put all of them out, their professional war, 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 uh, mourners, the Bible says they laughed at him. Jesus put them all out. He took the child's father and the mother and the disciples with him and went in with the child. He took her by the hand and said, Talitha Kumu which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. At the word of Jesus, this is the second time that Jesus caused someone that sleep. Well, this girl was asleep. She was not dead. But Lazarus was dead. And Jesus calls him from the dead. This young lady is asleep. Jesus didn't say that she was dead, but she was asleep. And he said, Talitha Kuma, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And everybody was astonished. I tell you, there's nothing that God cannot do. This concludes chapter five. The Bible says he gave strict orders not to tell anybody about this told them to give her something to eat why would he tell them to give her something to eat because a corpse can't eat why did jesus tell them not to tell anybody because he didn't want people to follow him just because he could do miracles he wanted them to follow him because of his teachings and as a result of obeying his teachings listen to the word of god God will bring forth miracles. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your attention today. All right, let me see some of you who have come on now. God bless you. That's a good word. That's going to be our text for Sunday. We're going to see what God's going to do. God's going to show up and God's going to show up. I want to invite you to please join us for worship on Sunday. You don't want to miss this word. You, I, There's going to be a wonderful anointing. God is going to do something great. I feel it in my spirit that God's going to show up and God is going to show out. Phyllis, Larry, how are you? Hope you had a wonderful birthday. I tried to call you yesterday. Sister Gloria James, Mary Lawrence, how are you? Maxine Bookerman, Book, Bookerman, good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Um, Angela Kelly, we continue to pray for you. Uh, Angela, thank you. Carmen, how are you? Um, 
Deborah Dunham, we missed you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie Crawford. How are you? Gloria James, how are you? Ruby Ramsey, good to see you. Joan, how are you? Um, Natalie Brian Crawford, how are you? Um, Emma Jean Brown, good to see each and every one of you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for another day, we give you thanks. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, your hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord, unto us. So now we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Now, God, I pray that you bless each person that thought in our robbery spend this time. We thank you that the grass withered and the flower faded, but your word will stand forever. Now, God, there's somebody that's sick in their body. We know that you are a doctor. The more healing in him and your garment than all the hospitals in all the world. There's somebody, oh God, that has more bills than they have money. But we know that you're Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. We know that the earth is yours in the fullness thereof. We pray, oh God, you meet them at the point of their need. Somebody on this call today, oh God, they're in a confused state. But we know that you're able. Because you said in your word that I'll keep him or her in perfect peace if they keep their mind stayed on me. So God, meet each of us at the point of our need. We come to tell you that we love you, that we praise you, that we adore you, that we magnify you, and that we lift you up. And then, oh God, we pray for this place called Salem. That you will ever help us to be the house of peace, the house of love. The city that's set upon a hill that cannot be hid. The city that points men and women and boys and girls to the one who is the light of the world. We thank you now. We praise you. We honor you. And we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. So delighted to have this time with you today. I look to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, if you want to get a jump start, we're going to chapter six. We're going to be traveling through the book of Mark. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Know that there's nothing that can happen to you that you together with God cannot handle. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. How are you, Sister Elaine Gutsman? Thank you for um, stopping in as well. Angela Kelly, we continue to pray for you. Joan, good to see you. Um, your sister left a nice comment on from Sunday's message. Good to see each and every one. Have a good day. God bless you. Let me get back to work. <laughs>